I qualify to be here because I'm old. Um, in leadership, when we went to prayer about putting our calendar together this year, one of the visions we received was let's do something a little bit different on our special days. Rather than simply hearing from another preacher, we want to hear from those who represent the group, the category that we're honoring. And today, we have one of our wisest and really most humble and gifted sisters in the body of Christ who has agreed to share her walk of faith and her testimony as a way of encouraging us. Sister Nellie Quander has been a groundbreaker, a lifelong educator who's given herself to the betterment of children and even rising to the role of principal. Uh, she has been a founding face within this church family, bringing together the great tradition of the Brooks and the Quanders. She is a praying sister, a loving sister, an encouraging sister, and we are blessed today that she's going to share her walk of faith and encourage us through some very valuable life lessons. Alpha Shoe, would you help me honor our own sister Nellie Quander, who will be sharing the word of God with us on this Sunday morning. My pastor, this young people in this choir, and to Alfred Street Baptist Church, I can't tell you, <clears throat> there are no words to tell you how humbled I am this morning. Because I have the opportunity <clears throat> to come to you and tell you, I love this church. Amen. This church has meant so much in my life. I remember my great-great-grandmother, Mary Frances Brooks, brought me to that old building over there. The only problem was she sat on the second row and I couldn't see anything going on back in the church. But the people of this church have been so much and played such a great role in my life. Wow. The fellowship and the friendship has meant so much to me. Their support in the time of trouble. It is with great, all the joy in my heart that I can look at you this morning and say to you, the members of Alpha Street, I love you. I love you in this church because you've loved me. I love you in this church because of the fellowship that I've shared over these years. I thank you. Now, I'm sure there are those of you who are asking right now, why do we make the pastor stand when he speaks to us? And why are you sitting? <laughs> well, I'm sitting because I've been afflicted with something that I never heard of before called drop foot. And if you have it, it can fall in a moment, and I've had my share of Three Stooges Falls. <laughs> and I'm not a pretty sight on the ground. <laughs> but basically, I want to say to you this morning that I really, I qualify to be here Amen. because I'm old. <laughs> Now, there may be just a few of you, because it only could be a few if you see me, who might not believe that I'm old, but I'm old. Now, I can prove it to you because for many, many years, my bank has been sending me a free annual calendar. <laughs> Now, now they're sending it one month at a time. Mm -hmm. 
I'm old. I perfectly qualify to be here representing senior citizens. I'm happy to be here representing senior citizens. Because I joined this church 64 years ago when I came from, Alpha, from Zion Baptist on Lee Street, where I grew up and was a member. I came over here 64 years ago because the man I was going to marry was here. <laughs> I'm old. Now, you know, when I was asked to do this, I thought, what am I going to say to these people? What will I talk about senior citizens? How can I come here? And so I sat down, took my pen in hand, and put my thoughts on paper. But then when I came back to review my thoughts, I said, this will never work. And we'll be in there until after 12 o'clock. <laughs> And so I had to stop and shave everything that I was going to say down. Leo, my brother, some, most of you know him, we talked last three, or maybe it couldn't be more than four weeks ago, we were in, just in conversation with each other. And we both said, there is no way that we can do any more public speaking. And we enumerated the reasons. Your eyes change on you. You know you need get to you need bifocals, you can't see your paper. <laughs> you get so you start a sentence and don't even know what it was about <laughs> and get to the And here I am with a brand new experiment, sitting in a chair speaking. I do ask you a prayers, because I've never done a thing like this before. I, I, it's difficult to sit and give the speech. But I ran into a problem, and I, now I know why the pastor frequently has a subject that he wants to talk about, and he has to divide it into several sermons and make a series out of it. Because when I started to think about what I was going to say, I realized I couldn't say that. What I'm going to say, I have cut to the very bone in order to get it into the service this morning. just giving you a thought so that you could see where I could have gone. <laughs> you know, I thought about old people in church. What are we in church? We've got arthritis, we've got our eyes are failing, our, our hearing is gone, our, we can't walk. We, we are having all kinds of problems. Why are we here in church? What is the use of it? Well, you know, Paul wrote a letter yes. to Titus. And in that letter, he outlined a reason that the old people might be here. He said that the old people old men and old women should be here to help teach and train witness to the young people. And then I thought about it. Did Paul say that we think that we could witness to the young people? 
Why did he think we could? I don't think he meant for us to be ordinary witnesses well. because we're old. I think that he intended for us to be expert witnesses. Wow. Now, now, there are, I know, a number of attorneys in this church, but I'm sure they will agree with me if I tell you there are some qualifications generally for being an expert witness. In many cases, this might change a little depending on the field or the argument that you're trying to make. But I'm sure they will agree that in order to be an expert witness, you need training. That in order to be an expert witness, you need the certification of some well-known group or somebody that's respected. You need to have experience with the problem or the situation in which you're dealing. Right. And you need time in it. You can't walk up and say, I'm an expert witness. I've been doing this for three weeks. <laughs> this morning I say to you that an expert witness needs training. And these seniors in this church, because I grew up with many of them, there's still some of them around, We, we have to look at that training. What is it? Let's start. I can tell you my training started at my mother's knee when she taught me how to say, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take started right there. And then my training moved on a little further where I learned to say our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I, it, I began to grow and then they took me to Sunday school. And when I got to Sunday school, I learned how to sing, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. And they told me a story about a young boy, a lad, who dad, with the backing and love and faith in Christ, to face a mighty giant with only a slingshot. While I sat there in Sunday school, they passed the collection plate so that I'd learn at an early age a part of being in this work is giving. And so each time we went, our parents gave us money to put into the collection plate. Oh, then I... I can tell you so much about the Sunday school, but I don't have time. <laughs> I went to church, and today, all these years later, I can hear Brother Edward Dixon started nearly every service on Sunday morning. He was singing, leaning on the everlasting one. I heard this as a child. I heard it Sunday after Sunday. You see, I began to get a message that I didn't have to lean on myself. Yeah. And I remember Mr. Samuel Tucker 
And the newest elementary school in Alexandria is named Samuel Tucker for his son. I can see Mr. Tucker now. Music would start up, and wherever he was, he'd stand and start to the front singing. He'd be singing, I'm but a stranger here. Heaven is my home. I'm a little girl listening to him, listening to these people hearing to say. And then Reverend Botts at Zion many years ago told us about three Hebrew children that were dropped into a hot furnace and didn't get harmed at all because the Lord was with them. They opened the door, they looked in and saw angels. I remember those stories. I remember how they touched me as a child. He told us about Daniel being in a lion's den and nobody, not a lion moved. I can tell you about those days as I went to Sunday school and church because they touched me. They were training, they helped me to grow. And then I heard those choirs singing, all to Jesus I surrender. I heard them singing, blessed assurance. I heard them singing, fairest Lord Jesus. I heard them singing, out of my bondage, sorrow and night, Jesus I come to thee. I heard him singing about an old rugged cross. And over and over during the years, I heard those messages. I was being trained. Yeah. And then I went off to college. And when I went to college, I had a special privilege and opportunity. Dr. Samuel D. Witt Proctor was my president. And I don't know what I did, but he would collect four or five students when he was invited to speak in the area on Sundays. And so often I got to be one of them. And he would take us with him as he went out to deliver messages. And I remember being there with him when I learned the lesson. He talked about Christ's conversation with Peter, saying, Peter, do you love me? And that, at that time, I learned that there, were more, there was more than one reason, uh, uh, explanation for the word love. And he explained to that group that day, I was being trained. And I learned that there was a kind, some different meaning for love. And he was talking about godly love, not brotherly love. And in the joy of my heart, college students didn't like to go to chapel, but Virginia Union was a religious college and we had to go to chapel and even pay somebody to sit in your seat. <laughs> but, but I can tell you, when the great Dr. Gardner Taylor came to our school, you couldn't find a seat in the house. The students stood along the wall because the man was a master yeah. at painting a word picture so that you could feel the snow on your skin when he talked about it. And he stood there. And once he told us about a blind man who cried, Oh, Lord, I want to see. It was such a privilege to hear those people and to let them teach me, because I was in training. 
I could have talked all this morning on nothing but this section about learning to be an expert witness. I was trained when I didn't even realize I was being trained. Because I saw the behavior of many old saints. They encouraged me, they talked to me, and they told me about Christ. I want you to know that we could talk about training for being expert witness. And that's a qualification that we have to have to be an expert witness. I want you to know that there are other qualifications. I could stay one day, that's what I'm telling you. I could take one section, like Reverend does, <laughs> and talk about nothing but the training that goes in and has gone in to senior citizens and making us experts. You know, you, don't need, you only need to have proper training. You also need certification. Right. Now, I want you to know that when I was nine years old, I got my certification. I went down in the water. But I heard my teachers in school the next morning, one teacher saying to the other, you know they baptized those, that, those children and they don't even know what they're doing. And I, I said, oh no, that's not true. Because I know that I, have to, I had to increase in wisdom and strength. But I knew then that I had decided to follow Christ. I knew that I was certified, even though they didn't believe it at that point. And they didn't know that the church approved my certification. You know, I could talk about receiving that certification. I could go on and on talking about it. I don't have time. <laughs> In order to be an expert witness, we need training and we need certification, acceptance by some recognized body of people. Yeah. Then we need experience working in the field, dealing with the problems of everyday life and experiencing the fact that the Lord is in that life with us. I cannot tell you the experiences I've had that made me know there is a God somewhere. Yeah. That he's looking out for me. When you have had to hold your sick baby in your arms and say, oh Lord, please, let my baby get well. And he did. Mm. When you have been caring for the ill and you're so tired, you say, Lord, I can't make it one more day. I can't do it. I've struggled so hard and I'm tired. And don't you know when you wake up the next morning, you refreshed and you can make it one more day. I'm going to tell you that you can have some horrible experiences early in the morning 
I was visiting with my daughter, and the two of us were in bed sound asleep. And it sounded all of a sudden as if a train had hit that building. And then it started to shake. What a horrible experience. It cracked the walls. It turned over the furniture. It moved the re re big refrigerator freezer in the kitchen from one side to the other and threw all the mustard and ketchup and everything else out in the floor. It was such a horrifying experience. And don't you know, in that earthquake, we never got a scratch. I, I recalled while I was there that the minister the day before had preached what you were singing this morning. Jesus is everywhere that we are. We don't have to turn our head. We don't have to look. And so as we were there waiting for the shaking to stop, waiting for the horror to end, we realized we didn't even have a scratch. God is watching out for us. You learn these lessons as you go on. I can tell you, when you are in pain, we've experienced it. When you're suffering, that God comes and relieves your pain. Oh my goodness, what is it to hold somebody you love in your arms and they die? And you wonder with the grief, the suffering, how, Lord, can I go on? And then all of a sudden, you go back to your training and you remember You remember that Paul said, don't behave as if you're ignorant and you have no hope. And so in the midst of grief, you can begin to smile. In the midst of grief, you can begin to say, I look forward to seeing that loved one again because you know that Christ died so that you could see him again and to give us life eternal. I could have talked this entire time about the experiences that I've had that would make me an expert. That I can tell you about opportunities that I didn't even dream about. They sang this morning, Doors. It weren't even open. That's right. That's right. That I didn't even know were there. Yeah. Do you know in my career, God opened so many doors that I didn't even know existed? <clears throat> I can be an expert witness because I've had so much training and I've been certified. And I've had so much experience with dealing with the problems of life. I can tell you that we talk about troubles and God coming to us in a time of trouble. But he comes to us and brings us joy, too. And so when he opens many doors, he brings us joy and we can smile and be grateful. He brings us opportunities that we never thought of as we have experience. And I have had training, oh, many years of it. I was certified 
and I can't tell you about the experiences that I have that would make me an expert witness. And then there's work in the field. You can't just be an expert witness because you have the training and because you have the certification and because you've had a lot of experience in it. You got to work in it. Yeah. And I remember the joy that comes with the working. You know, many years ago, Alfred Street had vacation Bible school from 9 in the morning until 12 in the afternoon for two weeks. And it was a joy. I had a five-year-old at that time, and he didn't want to come. But I'm going to tell you that the first day he came, Richard Ware was the teacher for the five-year-olds. And he went to Richard Ware's class, and I don't know what Richard Ware did to him. He just couldn't get out here the, the next day fast enough to get here. There's a joy in working in the field. And I remember Miss Benji Burke, who came and played for us in Vacation Bible School. And she was playing building, daily building, as the moments fly. And we sang that in Vacation Bible School. And we had a fellowship with each other as we worked to make Vacation Bible School successful. Oh, Ardelia Hunter, who passed a year or so ago, and I worked as Sunday school teachers. And you think that might not be a chore, but I had the pastor's children in my class. <laughs> and so I had to work because I knew those children were going to report. <laughs> but there was a joy in working with those children. There was a joy in teaching Sunday school. And you might think I'm joking, but one of the most wonderful experiences I've had working was as soon as I retired, I became a kitchen lady. And Lucille Day, as many of Deacon Lucille Day was, in charge of preparing meals for funerals. And we were her work crew. I cannot explain to you the friendship and the fellowship we developed working together. It was such a joy to come and work with those ladies. One week, we had four funerals. And somebody walk into the room at the end of that day when we had done, cleaned up and when we had done all we had to do and said, I'm so tired. And I remember Eva Thomas looking at him saying, well, at least we gave you one day off. <laughs> <clears throat> but there was a joy, a camaraderie, a friendship that you develop when you're working that helps to make you an expert. And when you've had training, and when you've had certification, mm. and when you've had so much experience with the problems of the world working and discovering the Lord, and then you start to work in the field. I love being a kitchen lady, and when we got the meal pretty near prepared, and it was 10 minutes before the funeral. If there, wasn't, if there weren't enough people in the choir, we ran up and got choir robes and marched down the aisle. <laughs> Such a love. I had the experience of working with the greeters for a while. I'm going to tell you the love and joy of working with those women 
There were so many young women, and I learned to love them so. And I hated that I couldn't stand up anymore and continue that job. But when you are out in the work of the Lord, it's wonderful. It's the, the fellowship, the friendship, and it goes on the rest of your life. There's so many that I know. I look in that choir and I see Richard Ware who grew up on my street. And I don't want to tell it because I didn't tell my age yet. <laughs> but Richard's six months younger than I am. I tell him he's older. But People like that, they've been in this church. I uh, recently recognized two members of one choir who've been in there 40 years. I dare say that these young people up here have a wonderful friendship and camaraderie that they have developed because they're working for the Lord. Yes. And I want you to know that a part of becoming an expert, not only training, mm -hmm. not only certification, not only experiences with the everyday life, but to work in the field. I want you to know, as a witness, Oh, I've been, I'm an expert witness because I've been here so long and I know what God can do. Yeah. God never fails. Somebody sang this this morning. Somebody sang this morning. He made a way. And as an expert witness, I know he'll make a way. In times of grief and sorrow, I know he'll be there. I know he'll heal. I know he'll take away the pain. He has the power. Times of joy, he must rejoice with us. He brings the sunshine yeah. and he brings the rain. Yeah. We learned this morning that Jesus saves. He made a way. This morning, I could tell you so much more about my training to be an expert witness. I could tell you so much more about my certification. I could tell you so much more about my experiences when, when the God proved to me that he can do all things. And I can tell you that about the joy of working in the field. He never failed. In times of grief and sorrow, he heals. In times of joy, he shares it with us. He watches and keeps us. He makes the sunshine and the rain. I want you to know that this morning, as an expert witness, I can tell you, since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controlled, since I gave my heart to Jesus, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Every, every need he is supplying plenteous grace he bestows. Every day 
gets brighter. And the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, he grows, the more he grows. The more I, that I love him, the more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven. My heart overflows because the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Thank mm -hmm. you.